another perspective from a guy who uh, has been working this for got to be 25 years. I used to have him on the O'Reilly Factor, and now I've had him on the No Spin News a number of times. Stephen Camerata is the director of research for the Center for Immigration Studies. Um, okay, Border Patrol Union says, good bill, we ought to sign this bill, we need this bill. You say? Um, I, I can't speak for them, but it doesn't seem like the bill does the things that we need. It has all kinds of other things that are kind of a democratic wish list. And I'm not just talking about Ukraine. I'm talking about other things like increasing green cards. But it also puts into uh, legislation and law policies of the Biden administration that have greatly accelerated illegal immigration. So it seems very counterproductive. But I'm assuming what they like is, you know, more resources for uh, the Border Patrol. It's more spending, more hiring, that kind of thing. And bureaucracies usually favor that, regardless of the underlying policy. And that may be what's going on here. Again, well, the thinking is this, is this is better than the chaos we have now. Anything is better. That's the thinking. Um, did you read the bill, Steve? I have reviewed the bill and spoken to people who are attorneys who've gone through it piece by piece. Okay. So I've read big what, sections of it. So. In your opinion, and we got to keep this simple because people can't possibly understand 370 pages of bureaucratic, uh, you know, uh, what is the most egregious part of the bill to you? Well, it's extraneous stuff. Why would you give out a whole bunch more green cards? What does that have to do with the border? Why do you allow uh, a policy that's being, here's a great irony, there's a policy that's being uh, challenged by 20 attorney generals that is a letting what are called asylum officers, who often are not lawyers or anything, basically grant asylum. This is a new thing the Biden administration essentially um, created, including the, the attorney generals who are challenging it are from Oklahoma, where Senator Langsford's from, and also from uh, Kentucky, where um, the majority leader is from, the minority leader's from. Um, so we have a situation where literally they're putting into law a policy that is being challenged in court because it's making it so easy to get asylum. In it, but the, probably the most egregious thing is the stuff that everyone's focused on. The border doesn't, quote, get shut down until we get a consistent day after day, like a week, of 5,000 new border encounters. So in other words, we have to get up to the record and then we, quote, shut it down. But keep in mind that that doesn't even happen because even when it's shut down, and remember the president doesn't have to shut it down, but he has the he can if he wants. We're still supposed to process fourteen hundred illegal immigrants and release them presumably into the United States. So we don't have a use. There's a thing called expedited removal. Let you send people back quick. We have a requirement for say asylum applicants to be detained. That's being ignored. So we're not using expedited removal. We're not going to be um, sending people back quickly. We're not going to detain them. We, as you point out, we had this sound policy remain in Mexico. We got rid of that. We got rid of the migration agreements we had with sending countries. Um, so what this essentially is, is kind of, look, here's the thing about the Democrats, and this is not a character, uh, a mischaracterization or a caricature. Their position is everyone in the developing world has the right to apply for asylum in the United States. And if the system is overwhelmed, they should be released into the United States. Right. Now, just so well, you know. That's certainly the Biden administration yeah. say. That's the but in the bill, let me play devil's advocate. There are new provisions for getting asylum. And they are, you got to prove that you couldn't move to another part of your own country for safety. You got to prove that you couldn't go to another country, which they can't because they're all marching through Mexico. You're already in another country. So it makes it harder. At least that's what it says in the bill to get asylum once you get a hearing in the United States, which could be anywhere from three to eight years. And, that, and that's not going to lessen, even if they put in more people to adjudicate it. This is just too many right now. But yeah, two, two quick in the points. bill, One it tightens up what asylum, what the qualifications for asylum are. A, those provisions are already in the law. You can take into account as an, as an immigration judge whether the person could relocate <laughs> in their own country. You can, but they're not doing it. 
No. The, the other thing is you already have it in the law that if a person travels through a safe third country like Mexico and then comes here, they're really country shopping. They're not fleeing for their lives. And remember, that's what asylum is supposed to be. So right. there's no reason to believe that the Biden administration would implement something that's already in the books, even if the wording has slightly changed. They still want to let asylum officers play a role in this system of granting asylum, something that's never happened. They were only supposed to be there to weed folks out. In other words, we have all the provisions or most provisions are already on the books and they're not being enforced. There's no reason to think that saying them again, in effect, would have that much effect. And remember, sure, the if they're not going to be enforced and under a Democrat administration, whether it's Biden or Michelle Obama or whoever, um, yeah. the word is going to go out, let them in. Okay, final yeah, question. Final question here. Biden is lying, in my opinion, when he says, give me the authority and I'll shut it down. Now, you've been doing this a long time. Trump's remain in Mexico policy was an executive order, correct? Yes, but we had to negotiate it with Mexico. Right. I don't even care about Mexico at this point. So if Trump can do a remain in Mexico policy where you couldn't come to the United States and wait for your asylum hearing, could not, okay? Biden can do the same thing, right? There's no reason he couldn't, right? That That's a right. fair point. He could use expedited removal right now. He could use so detention. We could resign lying. migration agreement, yes. And everybody in the media knows he's lying and doesn't challenge the lie. That is really serious. Right. I mean, the coverage of this without explaining to people that the border was largely under control. It is not the case there was a massive economic deterioration or massive new political oppression in the world, including in Latin America. That's not what caused this. Sure, America's richer. Life is better here. Uh, but that I mean, was look, true in 2019. That's not Kamala what's Harris it's knows the root policy. causes, though. She'll explain all that. And, you know, Steve, I don't mind the 50,000 more green cards a year. I don't. Because there are industry that need labor in, in the farms and in the service industry. I don't mind that as long as it's legal. But this thing is totally out of control. We appreciate your expertise, Steve. Thanks very much for helping us out. By now, you have heard me talk about Delta Rescue. They are a fantastic organization that helps rescue animals from the wilderness. You know, I'm a dog lover. So is Leo Grillo, the founder of Delta Rescue. It is his life's mission to provide everlasting care for these once abandoned animals. I myself have donated to Delta Rescue. Do you believe it is part of man's duty to care for dogs and horses, the animals that so much of our history is tied to? If so, please consider making a donation or consult your advisor about leaving a gift in your will or trust. There can be some tax advantages, and it's a great way to help Delta Rescue accomplish their mission. So please visit DeltaRescue.org to learn more. That's DeltaRescue.org. Okay, um, this is a terrible story off the migrant thing. You know about uh, Times Square, two police officers, 14 migrants attacked them, all right, 14. Seven have been arrested, five of them released without bail, one charged and one no charges, okay? The five who were released without bail are in the wind, which means authorities believe they have left New York, but we don't know where they are. Okay, the one that was charged with bail, and the bail was only 15,000, all right? Um, He's got on his sheet already two counts of robbery and assault on a police officer. So they had to keep him. So the DA, Alvin Bragg in Manhattan, lets the five go. He didn't have to. All he had to do was call ICE. That's all he had to do. And ICE would have detained them. Because they came here on an asylum request, bogus, of course. They're thugs. They're gangsters. All right. So that's fraud. Ice grabs them. But no, no. Here's what Bragg said. Go. In Manhattan, we do not tolerate or accept assaults on police officers. 
I watched the tape this week. Uh, despicable behavior. It sickened me and outraged me. It sickened and outraged Bragg so much he let five of the uh, perpetrators go. And now nobody knows where they are. So, I'm the governor of New York, right? What do I do? I fire Bragg because Section 34 of the New York Public Officers Law says ultimately up to the governor to decide whether removal is warranted for any accused district attorney, county clerk, or sheriff. So if you are accused of dereliction of duty, which it certainly was, Hochul can uh, fire you on a spot. Kathy Hochul, governor of New York, here's what she said. Should those individuals be deported? I think that's absolutely something that should be looked at. I mean, if someone commits a crime against a police officer in the state of New York, um, and they're not, you know, they've not processed, they're not here legally, definitely worth checking into. Oh, yeah, let's check into it. Let's show we are, we had to check into it. This is what I mean. This is what I mean. These elected people in New York do not want to solve any problems. What We're going to look into it. Oh, it's despicable. It's so despicable, I let them go. As Trump would say, he let him go. And Hochul could fire him tomorrow. No. So what are we in New York to think? Well, we had an election and Hochul won. She beat Lee Zeldin. Not by a lot, but she beat him. Okay, I'll keep you posted. I'm watching this story like crazy. Um, but I can't tell you because I have lived here. I'm born in Manhattan, raised in Levittown, and I, I've watched this state and the city decline so much. Hey, we got to look into it. All right, overseas uh, Secretary of State Blinken, the point man now, the Biden administration says we're bombing the hell out of uh, all kinds of people, but nobody knows what that means. We don't know. I don't know. It's a giant desert in Yemen. It's a giant desert in Western Iraq on the Jordanian border. Nobody knows. There are no reporters there. If they were there, they would be killed. So, by the way, are we getting them? I don't know what they're doing. I wish they did. It is not too late to make the right choice. If you're distancing yourself from companies supporting the radical left, please choose AMAX Medicare Advisory Service. Whether it's prescription drug coverage, plan changes, exploring Medicare options, AMAC provides top-notch guidance from their experienced staff. Upholding pro-America values, AMAC has been helping people navigate Medicare for years. Their services are not only free of charge, but also free from any leftist agenda or corporate influence. AMAC stands as the conservative alternative to the AARP, earning its position as the number one group for freedom-loving individuals. So make the right choice for your health and values with AMAC. Choices do matter. And the choice is yours. Choose Medicare the right way with AMAX Medicare Advisory Service. You can call them at 888-355-5605 during normal business hours, 888-355-5605, or online at amac.us forward slash trust. That's amac.us forward slash T-R-U-S-T, amac.us forward slash trust. Our freedom should never be taken for granted. They must be cherished, protected, and defended. When corporations pander to the liberal agenda, they must be punished. When corporations stand up for conservative values, they should be supported. This brings me to Freedom 2.0, the bottled water company that proudly represents us. They have hilarious sayings on each bottle like, this water ain't woke and bottled with liberal tears. 
Use the code BILL for a 15% discount and subscribe to Freedom 2.0. We must never discount freedom, but we can discount water as long as you use the code BILL. Please visit freedom2o.com to order now. That's freedom, the number two, the letter O, dot com. Freedom2o.com, use code BILL for 15% off. Smart life, getting up in the morning. Okay, the morning's the most important part of the day. I know you heard it, but it's true. And uh, I was looking at some websites, and they're giving you all kinds of tips in the morning, and most of them are just foolish, dopey stuff. But it's, it's worth to, for a smart life to do certain things. Number one, when you get up, whatever time that may be, ease into the day. Don't you know, pop up like a little jack-in-the-box. And before you go to bed the night before, if you have stuff you have to do in the morning, write it down on your dopey phone or on a piece of paper. So you know, because in the morning, it takes about a half an hour to focus. Now, if you're blasting the coffee down, the cafe- you'll get a little caffeine lift, but that's not really mental clarity. OK, so ease into the morning. You know, you don't, it's number one, ease into it. Then you pick up the pace a little bit. And depending on what you have to do, and you'll know what you have to do because you wrote it down the night before, right? Now, I don't watch TV in the morning because it just drives me nuts. I mean, you could watch all the networks, all the cable. You and I will learn one thing between the hours of 5 and 10. You're not. It's just the same, whatever they're doing, I don't know. But I don't watch it. I do read the newspapers. I get newspapers delivered. And I read the, uh, a couple of the aggregate uh, websites because I got to know what happened overnight. And I listen on the radio to the CBS World News Roundup, which is pretty straight. All right. But I have my information thing. Then I eat a little breakfast, not a lot. Okay, I got my what are I, Irish oatmeal, blueberries. English muffins, I do put a little butter on it, a little jam once in a while. But I'm not, not the heavy cholesterol, bacon and eggs, once in a while. But I want to be lean and mean here as I zip into the day. But think about the morning. The morning is very important for you. Thank you for watching the No Spin News. To watch the full episode anytime on BillOReilly.com, please sign up to become a premium or concierge member. Visit BillOReilly.com to sign up and start watching today.